This video is brought to you by the Logitech Lightspeed wireless range of keyboards, mice and headsets, the benchmark in wireless gaming performance. Neo 2 has been updated to support NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling 2.0, also known as DLSS 2.0 for short. This update is particularly interesting as I think it opens up some new ways to experience this game on hardware that supports DLSS and because it also gives us a new type of comparison point for DLSS's quality. See, in other games in the past with DLSS 2.0, DLSS came in and replaced the game's standard TAA or Temporal Anti-Aliasing. So the point of comparison for DLSS was always against a game's TAA. And in general, TAA can have some issues. It blurs, it ghosts, and it gives games sometimes an unsharp look. So we at DF always wondered in the back of our heads if DLSS 2.0 looked so awesome because it was being compared against a generally flawed image with TAA. With Neo 2, the comparison this time is different, as Neo 2 does not have a TAA like all those other games we've tested so far with DLSS 2.0. The native image presentation and anti-aliasing in Neo 2 without DLSS is very raw and very pixel sharp. There is very little post-process anti-aliasing treatment going on here. So when we compare DLSS 2.0 in this title, we're not comparing it against an image with all the problems that TAA can have. So how does DLSS 2.0 compare to the real deal without blurry TAA getting in the way? Let's start with that image quality here. Here I'm comparing DLSS quality mode outputting at 4K to the native image at 4K with the highest settings and 16 times AF forced in the driver for both. Looking at edge quality and anti-aliasing is where the largest difference seems to be between DLSS and the native image. Let's stop here in this shot and take a look at the edges in both images. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the left hand side of the image with native 4K has a very raw and untreated look to its edges. So you can see those sawtooth edges of aliasing on the geometry here and on almost all geometry. This is a negative aspect of image quality and undesirable usually. On the right, DLSS DLSS is providing anti-aliasing for those same edges and eliminating that sawtooth pattern, making the lines look like complete lines instead of lines broken up by edges. The reason why these edges are undesirable in an image is because what they do in motion as they shimmer, we can get a sense of the stability of the motion that DLSS has over the native image quality treatment if we look at these little mushroom characters here. Notice on the left in the image how the detail on the helmet of this character where there are reflections like here on the left hand side here, or here on the underside rim of the helmet, how these are shimmering rapidly in motion, making it look like the helmet is sparkling. This is not because the material is sparkly, but it is because the image lacks a certain level of anti-aliasing and the detail from those reflections is too high actually for the resolution we're looking at. On the right with DLSS, the anti-aliasing is quite a bit better, so it's keeping shimmering to a minimum in comparison. If we stop the frame, we can see exactly why this is happening. The native 4K image here on the left has the edges where reflections are being broken up by visible edges, so little sawtooths, like on the underside of the helm or with the little symbol in the middle of the hat. The right side of the image with DLSS obviously doesn't. Just so we get a sense of what's going on here, here I'm going to put in the middle of these two images that same scene rendered at 1440p but with no DLSS. 1440p is the internal resolution of DLSS quality mode here. So even though DLSS on the right is running at the same internal resolution as the image on the middle, we can see what DLSS is doing to produce more detailed images as well as more stable ones than its internal resolution does by itself. That greater stability of image is most obvious in game on edges like these, like character hair, foliage, or the thin edge of this bowstring here, where all are sparkling in motion as they move and the aliasing or the edges in the image, those sawtooths, break up. On the right hand side here with DLSS, we can see that image is much more stable in motion, where the hair, the wire on the bow, and the trees in the background are no longer shimmering each frame. This is a pretty nice thing. All these differences though are the exact same ones I've seen in 
every single DLSS 2.0 video before this one. So there's not too much a difference here in Neo 2, even though it doesn't use a strong TAA. But there are some curious differences in this game that have caught my eye. Check out this zoom in of the game's intro screen when looking at the blossoms on the cherry tree. In motion, they are flickering a lot less with DLSS. And if we stop the frame and look at the edges of the geometry in this image, like the background branch here for example, we can see that the edges of objects are really detailed and well smoothed over in DLSS, unlike the raw sawtooth look of the native image. So yeah, DLSS is of course producing better edge quality and better edge detail than native. But if you look at the internal texturing of the flower themselves, like the blossom I'm pointing to here, it's possible to see how the texture detail is actually lower in the DLSS image here. Going back to this other comparison image I made, we can see that same effect on far away texture detail, like here with this wall. On the DLSS side, the edge detail is flawless and better than native, but the internal texture on the wall is obviously lower resolution. That's a little bit unexpected, but the reason for this happening is very interesting and it requires a tiny graphical explanation. A texture in a modern game has many lower resolution versions of itself called mipmaps. Without mipmaps, textures at a distance shimmer a lot. This is why certain games on older consoles like Shenmue 2 on the Dreamcast have a lot of flickering and textures at a distance as the camera moves. Without mipmaps, the game may be more detailed, but it flickers a lot. In modern games, mipmap usage scales with resolution. So at higher resolutions, typically engines scale the mipmap so that higher resolution mips are used further into the distance so people playing at higher resolutions like 4K can take advantage of that extra resolution since they won't be seeing the same amount of flicker as someone with a 1080p monitor. Perhaps you've already guessed where I'm going with this, but DLSS runs actually at an internally lower resolution. In the example I have been showing here, it's running at 1440p internally and outputting at 4K. The issue lies in the fact that if texture MIPS are not adjusted for DLSS's inclusion, then textures at a distance may be blurry in comparison to those of a real native image. To check this out, I loaded up a NVIDIA Profile Inspector, which I have linked in the description below, and changed the internal mipmap selection by biasing it toward a more negative value like you can see on the screen here. After applying that value, I went back in game and looked at the main menu and well, the textures on the cherry blossom are running a higher resolution variant now and they are matching that as found in the native 4K image. When I went back in game and looked at the wall I mentioned earlier, I saw that same behavior. The texture of the wall with the default settings in DLSS is lower resolution than native 4K, but with negative LOD bias adjustments, that texture looks high res like it should be. And while we're here, check out how DLSS renders the textures on the ground actually without that crunchy striated look that the native 4K image on the left has much more pleasing. Now I'm not sure if this mipmap thing here is an oversight, but perhaps you in the audience also find the image on the far right better? If so, then definitely take advantage of the tweak I just showed off and mentioned, and it works for any game out there really, as well as others with DLSS. But beyond this issue, there are two other image quality defects I have found with DLSS in Neo 2. The first of which is a slight ghosting that can occur around foliage in the distance when it rapidly changes positions. Like here in these images. In the native image on the left, the foliage is very aliased and shimmery, while DLSS's is much smoother and does not shimmer. At the same time though, if you stop a frame and look at some of the areas outside the edges of the foliage, you can see small little patterns of ghosts from the foliage from previous frames. Another image artifact that I found only really happens visibly on the main menu in my experience, but it is there, and that is a shimmering that happens around the edge of the depth of field effect. This shimmer is not present in the native image, and it reminds me similar to an artifact I found in Death Stranding on PC, where different DLSS scaling values in that game made the depth of field sometimes shimmer. This artifact in the game menu with Neo 2 though seems to happen at any DLSS scaling mode, whether that be performance or quality. Speaking of those other modes, the scaling in this game is just the same as it is in any other DLSS 2.0 title. Quality mode looks the best, while balanced and performance mode can have slightly less accurate results, leading to minimal detail loss at times. But honestly, they all look rather similar. For lower than 4K resolutions like 1080p, 
The story is the same as I found elsewhere, where the visual splendor of DLSS performance mode is less impressive the lower the output res is, but I still think it's competent. But do notice here how in this comparison, how the texture of the stone on the shrine in performance mode is using a lower and, in my opinion, improper mipmap. So I definitely recommend adjusting mipmap bias if you're using DLSS in this game. So minus a few fudges, DLSS is looking good here, but its most felt advantage probably comes in performance. Looking at the lowest end RTX GPU in the RTX 2060, a scene that is rendering at 38 FPS at native 4K runs at 50 FPS in DLSS in quality mode, and just shy of 60 FPS in performance mode. So either increasing performance by 31 or a little bit above 50%. For a low-end GPU like the 2060 though, this is not enough to bring it up into 4K 60fps territory in performance mode as the game has such varied load and alpha effects often will put that 4K DLSS performance mode below 60fps. The greatest utility for this small RTX GPU is it's securing 1440p performance so that it runs smooth. Normal native 1440p output at this game's highest settings can have moments about 60 FPS and above, but many views on the game put the 2060 right on the edge, where little bits of action or alpha effects or any increase in the rendering load will see the 2060 falling rather often below 60 FPS into the middle or even low 50s. With VSync on, this would look and feel very inconsistent, and 1440p would essentially be untenable. But with DLSS in quality mode, there's enough headroom above 60 FPS due to DLSS so that even heavy effects explosions near the camera are quite a good deal above 60 FPS, essentially allowing this lowly GPU to lock the game at 1440p 60. In total, when measured, DLSS in quality mode will improve performance by 28% at 1440p on this GPU, while I think offering much better anti-aliasing at that resolution and a comparable level of detail, assuming you're using that mipmap bias tweak I talked about earlier. The extra headroom afforded by DLSS essentially allows for GPUs to lock more easily at their performance targets just out of reach. For example, the 3080 or 3090 at native 4K are not going to be powerful enough for 120 FPS locks, but with DLSS in something like performance mode, for example, the attempt becomes much more viable. GPU usage there allows for standard combat scenarios to be a rather excellent 120 FPS, where only cinematic shots with a lot of depth of field offer the exception to that 120 FPS rule. Sadly, I do not have an HDMI 2.1 screen to test 4K 120 on. As I imagine with variable refresh rate, you could make a rather awesome ultra high-end experience out of this game. To sum it up, I would say that in 9 out of 10 cases, DLSS offers much better anti-aliasing than native and comparable level of detail which is interesting as Neo 2 doesn't use TAA. The only downsides are the light ghosting on foliage and that depth of field shimmer in the menu, as well as that weird behavior regarding mipmap textures in the distance. The last of which I hope a developer can address in a patch, but that's really all I can say for the moment about this. If you did like this video on DLSS and Neo 2, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to see this video in the highest quality 4K available, support DF on Patreon to get this video and years worth of videos in the highest quality for download. If you want to talk to me about DLSS or Neo 2, well, write a comment below or follow me in Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen! Finally, a headset that can be as expressive as you. G733 is wireless and designed for comfort and it's outfitted with all the surround sound, voice filters and advanced lighting you need to look, sound and play with more style than ever. Lightspeed wireless technology lets you game wirelessly without compromises in latency, connectivity or battery. Play in complete freedom with over 20 hours of battery life and a range of up to 15 meters.